Okie dokie. So, I have to define, define the 300 millimeter f4 again because I keep getting an enormous amount of questions about 300 millimeter f4 Nikkor lenses, which is the best, and it's always, well, what's your budget? What do you plan on using it for? The questions I get invariably always are missing two things. What's the budget, <laughs> and what are you using it for? Third one is, is what are you mounting it on, too? Obviously, the, uh, uh, the field of view um, is different, 300 millimeter, 450 millimeter on DX crop sensor. Not really 450 millimeters, just a crop. A crop is only a crop. It's like, wow, if you stick a 300 millimeter on this DX crop sensor over here, it is automatically 450. No, it's not. It's a crop with a field of view of 450 millimeter. So I have the only four 300 millimeter f4 lenses to get, and all of them are awesome in their own way. I, got, I bought this for $2, so I have to use it because, you know, it's so cute, right? All of these will make you super happy. It depends on what your budget is and what the hell you plan on. Isn't that cute? I saw a bunch of these for $2, and I couldn't pass it up. <laughs> I even got one for my mama. She's like, she's like, what's this? <laughs> it was only $2, you know? Uh, yeah, I brought over some cookies and a smiley pillow. It's probably obviously made in China. Anyway, enough of that, right? We have some super cheap here and some super expensive. Um, no particular order. What are you going to do? Sports, action, wildlife, portraiture? There are three best lenses here out of the four. How could there be three? They're all 300 millimeter f4. They're all Nikon lenses. Depends on what you plan on using them for. Let's, in no particular order, go to if I were to be doing portraiture, which 300 millimeter f4 actually has amazing compression. It's absolutely beautiful, perfect for portraiture. 300 millimeter 2.8, which I have, is a huge honking lens that will just give you a hernia. Um, the best lens for portraiture out of all four of these, even if you didn't know what they cost. It's like, which is the one that renders the best micro contrast, color saturation, just pop, wow, amazing. And it is this. This is the D-Series. This has a built-in metal lens hood. The D-Series Nikkor 300mm f4. This is a screw drive autofocus lens. Actually has a drop-in filter um, for uh, actually if you wanted to stick a polarizer in here or uh, like a uh, ND filter. It's right back here. However, it's an 82mm front thread. However, those filters are kind of expensive at 82mm. But this is it. These are typically 400 bucks. My buddy up in Canada who's watching this video right now is like, I just bought that lens. I'm so happy he called me up after buying this lens. He goes, oh my god, I love this lens. He took some really beautiful pictures with it. I gave him a recommendation on getting it. He bought one up in Canada, uh, really cheap, relatively cheap anyway, especially for Canada. Um, but this is the best lens as far as if I wanted the best lens of these four for portraiture. This is it, period. 400 bucks all day long, basically used on eBay. No, it's not made anymore. I think they stopped making it in 1991. Let me scoot my Nikon D500 up here. So, yeah, I don't like lenses rolling off the table for some really odd reason. So that's the best for portraiture. This is a cheap little lens. Typically, I can usually find these. At least I used to be able to find these for 60, 70 bucks. It is the EDIF. Not a lot of versions of the old 300 millimeter. Uh, F4. This is actually technically an F4.5, but still it's an F4. Oh no, it's an F4.5. It's okay, it's an F4. This is the EDIF. You can see it only takes one finger to actually focus it. The rest of them you actually have to stick your hand around it. Nah, this is the older AI, AIS. Now this is a manual focus lens. It is technically an AIS, but I'm talking about the older versions of this, of which there are four. This is the last version and the best version. You can notice it has a gold ring around it. You can find one for 70 bucks. It doesn't matter if it's missing the tripod collar or not. Who gives a damn? Buy it. It's an incredible, simple lens. When it comes to portraiture, if you're on a budget, this is the lens to get. 70 bucks. Actually, I see a lot of these typically selling for like 150 which is actually what it's worth considering how awesome it is and it's the best version of the 300 millimeter f4 but it is a bit too much so that is that I think I got a couple copies of that lens which is ridiculous I know here's a lens that has only one fault and it is still made today I would not buy a new one because the new one is absurdly expensive I think a new one's like 1200 bucks is a 300 millimeter 300 millimeter f4 
AFS Nikkor built-in True Ring Ultrasonic. 77mm uh, uh, front filter thread, same as the new 100, uh, new 300mm uh, F4 uh, PF face Fresnel. Someone's going to say, nah, it's, it's, it's Fresnel, it's not Fresnel. If you actually watch Nikon's video, they actually say Fresnel, okay? Tomato, tomato, to pay, uh, potato, potato. Fresnel is also a valid way of pronouncing it. I hate it when people say, no, 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 it's not Fresnel, it's Fresnel. It's Fre It's both, okay? Anyway, the only uh, fault on this is that the AFS motor has a uh, almost a double track rate of other AFS Nikkors for failure. Typically, you find these for sale really cheap with broken AFS motors on eBay. You can get one like this in great working condition for basically $600. Awesome lens, perfectly fast enough since it's a true ring ultrasonic Nikkor. Perfectly fast enough for even birds in flight. Excellent lens. The rendering is between that of the uh, AFD Nikkor and the 300mm uh, Phase Fresnel. Low element count. Beautiful prime lens. For $600, it actually can't be beat. This is the perfect compromise between this expensive little sucker, which is made in China with a plastic body and uh, is insanely, insanely expensive. Metal, made in Japan, very simplex. Only one fault is the AFS motor has a bit of a propensity, and I think that's been fixed if you were to buy a new one, but if you are buy a new one, it would be very expensive, so you wouldn't even think about buying a new one for $1,200. However, that's not really a bad price. It's just you have no vibration reduction at all, okay? So you're going to have to have some bright light bird shooting because uh, I don't care how good you are. Um, however, the Nikon D500, we have an incredible high ISO performance, so it is really good on the Nikon uh, D500, so you're able to crank up the ISO. Get the shutter speeds up there since you have no vibration reduction on the AFS Nikkor 300mm F4. Let's leave the best for last, but best for what? Sports, action, wildlife, okay? I actually got the 14E. I'm not a teleconverter person. I've got a few teleconverters, but I only use them on huge primes. But I have the do I do have the TC 14E on its way to me, and uh, uh, that's going to give you a uh, 420 millimeter equivalent, and that's not field of view equivalent. That's 420 millimeter teleconverter on the back of the lens. Uh, not very inexpensive that teleconverter. Let's just say it's rather expensive. Anyway, this is the insanely expensive. 300 millimeter F4 phase Fresnel. I said Fresnel. If you want to say Fresnel, that's perfectly fine. Here's a plastic lens hood for it. The third element on this is a Fresnel element or Fresnel. Uh, 22 elements overall, extremely lightweight. Awesome lens, but oh my god, it will make your wallet scream! Just screech! Very, very expensive lens. Um, incredible vibration reduction. However, because it is lightweight, unlike the Nikkor 200 to 500, you think the Nikkor 200 to 500 has much better VR, but it doesn't. It's just that the lens is a huge counterbalance out there that resists any jerky movement you actually have while holding the camera. A lot of people say that as a report. Oh, the 200 to 500 Nikkor is much more steady on vibration control than the 300. It's like, well, yeah, duh. The 200 to 500 is a huge um stabilizer out on the front of the camera and is a lot more heavy so of course the vr seems to be better but in fact it's actually not it's just this is a really lightweight lens and any sort of motion a little herky jerky motion you actually have a muscle twitch is transferred into the lens so lightweight does have its disadvantages as a former archery instructor we actually screw in these heavy ass stabilizers that stick way the hell out of the front of the compound bow way the hell out some of them are five feet long if you ever watched an archery competition someone have a uh, really nice uh, all metal and fiberglass uh, compound bow maybe there's five foot stabilizer out in the front of it so weight has its advantages um, doesn't have its advantages if you want to track through the field I recommend watching Steve Perry's video and where he actually compares and contrasts this particular lens, the 300mm face Fresnel with the 200 to 500 Nikkor which I also happen to have, love the hell out of both of them do have sports mode, a switch between off, a VR normal, and sports for erratic or panning motion. You have a switch for full or infinity, i.e. full to 3 millimeters, so it's not full autofocus travel. AM switch or manual autofocus switch and manual switch. Very lightweight lens, high element count lens. You can let this hang off your camera 
as much as you want. This is actually a perfect lens for also photojournalism, but definitely for sports action wildlife. If you actually stick in the uh, TC14E uh, Mark III teleconverter on this, which is $500, by the way, you're going to have a 420 millimeter lens, less one stop. It's not going to be an F4 anymore. It's going to be a 420 millimeter f5.6 with that teleconverter on there. However, with a teleconverter and this lens, you're talking $2,500. Ah, that's a lot of money. This is $400. 80 bucks, 600 bucks, <laughs> $2,000, and you stick on the teleconverter, it's $2,500. Not only that, Japan, 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 China. <laughs> China. Japan, 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 China. Camera body, Malaysia. <laughs> this lens is also made in Japan. Snick horror. <laughs> 17 to 55, 2.8. So that's the lowdown. People say, what's the best 300 millimeter for? It's like, well, what's your budget? What do you plan on doing? If you say, I just want to use it as a portraiture lens, boom, there you go right there, 400 bucks. Sports Action Wildlife. Well, if you're on a tight budget, it is this lens for 600 bucks. However, this has no VR. But it does have a fast ring ultrasonic. It is perfectly good for birds in flight, but for low light scenarios, you're screwed because there's no VR on this lens. No, no, no. On this, there is, but this lens costs a lot of damn money, and it's made in China. <laughs> but it is awesome lens. I mean, you know, this is this is like sticking like a 50 millimeter f1.4 on the front of your camera. So, you know. You're packing around no glass at all, and you got 300 millimeters, and you stick that teleconverter on there, which really doesn't add much more weight to it at all, which is a seven-element seven teleconverter. So then you end up with a 28 count element, 28 element count lens. You end up with a 420 millimeter lens at 5.6. Okay, okay, 420 millimeters at f 5.6, but it is tiny and it doesn't really weigh anything, and that's the tits. But by God, that's really expensive. So that's the lowdown on the 300 millimeter F4s. You've heard it from the horse's mouth. This is the best video on 300 millimeter F4s that exists in the whole world. I know that for an absolute fact, because nobody else has done a video like this on a roundup of the only 300 millimeter F4s worth considering to purchase. So now you have all the information, and knowledge is power. Thank you both so much for watching. And if you like this video, drop a buck or two or tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. As long as you're happy and you're informed so you can make a logical, wise, intelligent decision based upon the facts rather than internet hearsay. Blah, blah, blah. I love this lens. How many lenses do you own? I only own four lenses, but this is the best lens in the world. How do you know? If you only own four lenses, how do you know that's a really great lens? Well, well, because, because I like it. That's what the internet's like. <laughs> Isn't that kind of information useless? Why? In fact, it is. It is useless. It's actually worse than useless. Thanks for watching. Dos vidanya, uvidium se paka, hasta luego. All that jazz. Bye. Aloha. I forgot aloha. Aloha, hoy, farewell to thee. <laughs>